What's up, everyone? Uh, my name is Ricardo Lund, head engineer of Raccoon Sound Studios, and uh, I want to welcome you uh, to another episode of our Tips and Tricks show, where we share information about our equipment and how we use it to make music. In this episode, we're going to be taking a look at the Electron Analog Keys, um, also known as the Electron Analog 4, the one with uh, no keys. And this review will be also useful for those users of the Electron Analog 4. And we're going to be taking a look at the functionality the build quality, uh, the workflow, and it, the sound. So without further ado, let's get right into the review. All right, guys, so we have the Electron Analog Keys right here in front of us. Uh, we're going to do a quick review of this synth today. And um, to start with, I just want to say that this is an all analog uh, synthesizer from Electron. Four voices, which can be split to different tracks in which you can have different parts, a bass, uh, some chords, some um, uh, keys and some effects, let's say. Um, and it's a pretty good synth, we've used it plenty in the studio. Um, very simple to use once you get used to the workflow, as all Electron gear, it takes a little bit of a learning curve. But once you're familiar with it, it makes a, a lot of sense and it's actually very enjoyable to use. Um, like all Electron gear, it has a great sequencer on board. Uh, I should also mention that there's a desktop version of the synth called the Analog 4. And um, in contrast to the Analog 4, obviously this has the keys. And then it also has uh, individual outputs, so you can send the four tracks to the individual outputs of audio, uh, which is very convenient. You can obviously do that also through Overbridge, which is the Electron software for controlling the synth via the computer. Um, and um, you can also multi-track audio through USB uh, by using Overbridge. But it's really nice to be able to have that through uh, regular uh, audio connections. So uh, first of all, I'm just going to talk a little bit about the synth layout and how it is. So you have the four tracks here. Uh, you have control over the effects right here. You have the function button that you, in all Electron gear, you have the very important function button that you access all the uh, secondary functions of each of the buttons. As you can see, there's some things with the red label right here. And you access those uh, things by pressing function in, the, in that button. So um, the function button is very important. Um, then you have a in here you have the patterns. You can store up to eight banks of six, 16 patterns. So a lot of uh, music that you can store um, in the synth memory. Um, and here you have uh, um, buttons to change uh, settings of the kit, of the sound, um, of the track, of the pattern, and of the song. Because in this synth you can have a pattern or you can have a song in which you have multiple patterns chained together so that they go changing to form a song. Um, so I'm going to start by just uh, previewing some of the presets that it has. Uh, mostly we're going to be making our own sounds, but I just want to give you an idea of what it can sound like. So if I go to, these are some bass presets. Check what else it has besides those some atmospheres. So you can see a very wide palette of sounds that, that it can create. Um, here we have more string sounds. Some lead sounds. So yeah, you can start to get an idea of what it can sound like. It uh, sounds very, very nice. Um, so to start with, I'm just going to clear the track sound for track one. So I'm going to go to uh, sound right here. And I'm going to, with in the menu here on the screen, I'm seeing something that says clear track sound. So I'm going to select that and press yes. 
I'm gonna confirm that. And now we have a basic sound loaded up to that. That's a basic sound. Um, and we're gonna make a little bit of a bass sound. So now going into the synth page, we have oscillator one, oscillator two, filter, amplitude, envelope, and LFO. So we're gonna go to oscillator one. I'm gonna exit out of this menu by pressing no. And we can change to the different shapes, pulse, triangle. This is like a so so square wave. I don't know. Um, but we're just gonna select a pulse wave for this, and we are going to select a sub oscillator for that. We have a sub oscillator as well. So two octaves down. Next, we're gonna go into the uh, amp envelope, and we're gonna take that sustain down. So we just have a short bass sound. And then we're gonna cut, cut some of the high frequencies with the filter. So as you can see, I'm seeing a lot of uh, controls here in the screen and each corresponds to these knobs. So in each of the pages, these knobs are gonna change the functionality um, and they're gonna do different things, but they are corresponding to what you see in the screen. So we're gonna give a little bit of envelope to that. We also have a overdrive over the the filter, give a little bit of resonance, and in here we have the octave uh, position of the keyboard, so we can go an octave down. So there we go. We have a pretty convincing bass sound. So now I have a um, here. I have a set up the TR8 to give us a little rhythm that we can play together with what we are going to put in the synthesizer. So I'm going to start the synth and I'm going to record live. So to record live, I just uh, press the red button, the record button together with the play button. And this will start flashing. That means that whatever I'm playing is going to record. So, And now if I unmute that page, As you can see, I didn't play perfectly in time, but we can go to the note, note setup, function and note, and I can turn up the global quantization to the max value. So now we are perfectly in time. Now I can go and tweak the filter a little further. And I can, as in all electron gear, I can parameter lock. So I can select one of my steps and open up the filter, say. I can change any setting, but this time I'm just going to change the filter. So I'll do a little bit of an accent in some of the notes with the filter. All right, so we have a little bit of a bass line right there. Now we're going to go to the second track. We're going to make a different sound. This is going to be sort of like a, a chord sound. Uh, so to do that, we are going to stop first and make our sound. So uh, I'm selected in track two. I am going to the sound, uh, clear track sound, confirm. We have our basic boring sound. Um, now. To make sort of a chord sound, I am going to leave it in a saw, saw wave. So, and on the sub oscillator, I'm going to go a fifth down. Then I'm going to go to second oscillator, raise the volume up. And um, I'm also going to put it on the sub oscillator a fifth down. But then I'm going to tune the, this oscillator. So we have a little bit of a chord sound right here. I'm going to also change the amplitude of this. I'm going to raise the release time.
Alright, so we're gonna also give a little bit of a chorus. We have chorus, delay and reverb on the amp page. A little bit of reverb could be beneficial as well. We're gonna go to the LFO page now. And um, I'm gonna change the shape to a sine wave. And um, we're gonna select filter one frequency. Give a little bit of depth. Maybe that's a little fast. So we have a little bit of a chord sound right there. Now we're gonna press play. Start. Now we're gonna record this live as well, except that if you notice on the bit, we just have a one bar. Uh, pattern cycling. So what we're gonna do is make the whole uh, pattern uh, four bars long. So I'm gonna go to the function in scale and you can see, you'll be able to see that it says 16 steps. So I'm gonna press function and I scale again, it goes to 32 steps, 48 and 64. So that's four bars. Now get out of that section. As you can see now we have four bars cycling between four of these units and I'm gonna turn on the rhythm and uh, when it gets back to the one I'm gonna start recording one two three four Turn on the track again, so I can hear it. You can also come to the filter and filter a little bit of the low end. Because uh, we have uh, two filters here. We have uh, two assignable, well one low pass and the other one is assignable. Right now I have assigned it to uh, um, high pass. We're also gonna bring maybe the volume down of that. Maybe raise the bass. That's good. All right, so now we have some bass and some harmony right here. <coughs> Notice that for the chord sound, we're using just one of the voices uh, by using a combination of the two oscillators and the sub oscillators and that way we are able to create a chord and it's kind of like a fixed chord kind of like a chord machine uh, we won't be able to change shapes of the chord but it gives us a, a nice little harmony and that way we're not using any of the other voices because obviously you can play this as a four voice polyphonic synthesizer where you can play normal chords four voice chords but you are sacrificing each of the voices uh, when you're doing that, so you won't be able to use the four tracks for different stuff, if that makes sense. So now we're gonna go to track three and we're gonna select kind of like a plucky sound for this. So for this, we're gonna find one from uh, the presets. Let's find something kind of plucky. Let's see what we can find. There's this very nice sound that I have. Uh huh. So percussion sounds, fake sounds. Atmospheres. Okay, we'll go with that one. Analog bleep. And for this, we're, I'm, I'm just doing it to show you the arpeggiator. Uh, if we go to this button, it has the arpeggiator function. So if I turn that on, 
I'm gonna turn it to uh, mode up, so the notes are gonna go up. Right. We can change the speed of that as well. We're gonna leave it in the 16s. So we're gonna record live also for that. So let's see what we come up with. Turn on the rhythm. Did it right? <laughs> so I don't like that, I'm gonna erase that. So let's see. Yeah. So you know what, I'm actually going to enter this manually, my fingers are not fast enough for this. <laughs> so the way we do that is we go to the first page, we're going to enter this chord, so you see the three notes, and uh, I'm going to make that um, 32 steps long. So go to the, by, I'm still holding the, 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 the trigger. And uh, I'm going to make the length 32 steps. There we go, 32. Now, in here, I am going to uh, put this other chord. And I'm going to make that 16 steps. Length 16. And then the last one, that's the chord that I want. And uh, we're going to make that also 16 steps. And now we should be good. Let's check it out. That sounds pretty good. So now we can obviously go and ed edit the sound a little bit. I should also mention that besides uh, having a parameter locking, we can also record the automation live. So we're gonna record the change of decay in that sound. So you can see by pressing record and play, starts flashing and then not only do I record notes but I also record changes in parameters so that's how we do that anyway we're gonna bring that chord sound a little lower here in the amp page right now I'm gonna stop by the way, I have this router to this multi-clock right here. That's why I'm not pressing start and stop here so that everything runs in sync. The drum machine and the synthesizer. So, um, Anyway, we're going to go to the last sound, track four. And um, I am going to enter some stab sounds. Um, and I have a nice stab sound that I made one time. Um, this dub chord sound. Right. Turn on the, the track function and press the track. We turn it on and off, uh, or mute it and unmute it. Um, 
And for this track, I'm going to want it to be only one bar long. So the way, remember now our pattern is four bars long, but we can have one track be a specific length. So I'm going to press function and scale again. And uh, go with the arrows here, with the left arrow, I'm going to go in, into the advanced section. And in the advanced section, I can see track four, you see, well, um, it says master length, 64 steps, track four, 64 steps. Well, we're going to change that. So I'm going to go here and make it 16 by pressing scale. Now press no to get out of that. Now you can see that this is only one bar long. This is four, 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 but there's only one. So I am going to just enter some notes manually. Now let's press with the multi clock so that it syncs with everything. Now I can make this this one step. We also have conditional triggers, which means that each step we can assign it to play every so often to say like that. So trigger conditions in the note page. I am going to make this play four out of four times. And then I'm gonna add another one here. And that one is gonna be, I don't know, let's do it two out of three times. And also, we're going to increase the filter in that one. So... So, as you can see, um, it's a it's a pretty simple synth to use. That's the basic workflow, the one that we use here in the studio. Obviously, you can have your own workflow for it, uh, depending on what type of music you make or, or kind of how you work in the studio in general, you know. But uh, in here, we don't really use the song mode. Uh, we kind of like make patterns here as we need, and we use them like that. Uh, and to be honest with you, we use it mostly for the four tracks we have barely used it for the polyphonic features i guess with time we'll be able to use it like that you know as with all synths you know you need time to make full use of it so so yeah um as you can see very cool sequencer very nice sounding uh, synth engine um i should, should also mention that like all the electron gear the build quality is superb so um, yeah, uh, definitely, re definitely a, a great recommendation for anyone that wants to get deep into a synthesizer. And like I said, you know, we can be days, weeks exploring the sound capabilities uh, that it has. Uh, I, I think I have just scratched the surface in this uh, review. And it's just to give you an example of how it works, how you can use it in our studio and to see if uh, you think it's a convenient um, investment for you. Um, so that is the analog keys from Electron. Thank you guys for watching this review on the Electron analog keys. Uh, uh, we hope you found it useful and that you can get an idea of what the synthesizer is like. Uh, if you like the video, uh, you can give us a thumbs up and leave a comment down below. Also, if you're located in the Miami area and you need some help with audio recording, music production, DJing, um, mixing or anything audio related, uh, please don't hesitate to contact us. I'm leaving the contact to our website down below so you can reach out to us for any of your needs. Again, this is Ricardo Lund and I'll see you guys next time.